Hey guys, it's SMPV1 here. Now before this video starts, I just wanted to say thank you so much for the 3,000 subscribers. It's been an insane journey, all that beforehand scripted stuff. Let's get straight to what you guys came here for. And also, if you want to see more plush collections like this, click the links that are up here. Up first, just to even out the space, we have giant mega crane game Luigi. Yes, I, well, I didn't win this from a crane game. I, I won it from some type of carnival game. I, I think it was balloon popping or something. Uh, but he is very fake, very big, very torn. Like, this button's about ripped and this one is already ripped. There's holes all over it. It's very very annoyingly flimsy. All right, now getting to what more you guys would probably want to see. Here we have Goldie, Super Mario Bros. Wii set Mario, and Luigi, my first two Mario plush. Actually, uh, my first three Mario plush because I got this one first. I actually found this one in my porch. That's not a lie. And uh, not my porch, my Florida room. Uh, and Luigi and the Goldie Koopa, which you'll see later, I got from a crane game. So yeah, here they are. I still need to fix this freaking hole. Here is one of the numerous fake Mario Party 5 Peach plushes out there. Not at all its size, it was very poorly made, it's ripping everywhere, it's very old, everything's flimsy, and it just overall sucks because it's a fake. And uh, next up, we have two Goldie Toad. This one, which looks really good, which I regret cutting the, the shirt strings off, and then um, there's this toad, which might be real, but I'm debating on it since it looks so much different and has this freaking bulge. This was actually my original toad, and this one uh, used to be Typing Ants, but he gave it to me. Hello! On the contrary, we have Mario Party 5 Peach, which looks a lot better, feels a lot softer, and it's definitely overall nicer. A lot smaller compared to other Mario plushes, though. And Mario Party 5 Toad. These are my only Mario Party 5 plushes, and I got them recently if you saw my Christmas bundle. Very soft head. Everyone's favorite cute carnivore, Yoshi. I'm pretty sure this is the all-star brand Yoshi. I don't think this is the Sanai, but still very nice. Russell. And we got five other colors where that came from. Blue Yoshi, Black Yoshi, Orange Yoshi. This one is probably the nicest in my opinion, because if you notice, some of the noses are like octagonish, but this one is nice and circular. And then, uh, what happened to Red Yoshi right here? Um, a while back, my father spilled coffee on him, and I was an idiot and didn't clean it off, so that's what happened to Red Yoshi. And then there was the infamous fake Yoshis, which are probably the easiest to run into. They got these weird papery shells, these fat ugly noses, and just everything about them is awful. Uh, this one I kind of like though because it's it's fluffier than the rest. I, I'm not sure if this is the same brand. It looks like it, but who knows. All Star and Sun Eye Plush look exactly the same, so who knows. Maybe this is official. But uh, yeah, these ugly freaking Yoshis. And then there's the, the mini Yoshis, which I'm pretty sure are fake, but I mean, I still like the mini Yoshis. If any of you remember Mr. Trummo before he quit, it was the villain in his series, and that's basically what made me get these Yoshis. Up next, we have Baby Mario, Baby Luigi, and Baby Peach, one of the more rare plush in my collection, because you don't see these guys very often. I mainly only see them in Mr. Gojira's videos. I haven't really seen them anywhere else. Baby Luigi and uh, Karen. Some very more common fakes, uh, we have the fake Baby Mario and Baby Luigi, which are way too big, way too derpy, way too fat, way too flimsy, just everything a fake should have. Oh yeah, and then there was Mace Window from the Yoshis. Next up, we have the bigger Mario, which I did use in the Rise of Skeletor whenever Mario fought, uh, Darkshade Lycanroc. I'm not sure if this is fake or not, it looks fake. Here is Toadette, and despite this possibly being fake, I'm not entirely sure, it is very, very overseen until the all-star one came out which looks way too big on the head in my opinion so I'm not getting the new one but uh here's Toadette and then we have Toadsworth I caught off his staff a while back for some reason I'm not really sure why I do that here is dumb dense dull derpy daisy I'm not sure if this is real but it looks so goddamn hilarious that I'm keeping it in my collection fake Rosalina and Luma not the worst of the fakes Luma could not be as Putin though here are two fire Marios and here's Fire Luigi. Very floppy legs on Luigi. It's always this type of Luigi plush that always has floppy legs. Fake Flying Squirrel Mario and real Flying Squirrel Luigi. 
you're wondering why Luigi's hat looks like this, it used to be stuffed and sewed on, but it's no longer, so I had to just wrap it around his hair. World of Nintendo Tanuki Mario. I always hated the World of Nintendo Marios. They just, just look so weird. And fake Fox Luigi. Oh, the hat fell off. And then there's white Tanuki cat, not not Tanuki cat, white Tanuki suit Mario. Even I'm even if this is fake, I still really like it. It just feels very nice. Here's World of Nintendo Ice Mario and World of Nintendo Keychain Mario, which I am gonna use as Mini Mario, even though Mini Mario is supposed to be a lot smaller than this. I think this is just about as small as most plushes can get. Next up is Fuzzy Fluffy Furry Feline Mario and Luigi. These are both real, and I'm bo and I'm very happy with both of these plush. Especially with Luigi, I like the spots on Luigi. You can tell most of the time if they're real if they have bean bags in them. Here's Squirrel, Blue Toad, and Yellow Toad. I always like the Blue Toad more than the Yellow Toad. Fake Boo Mario and Boo Luigi. There's no way in hell I'm gonna be able to find the real Boo Mario. This will have to do, I suppose. Here is fake Frog Mario, World of Nintendo Penguin Mario, uh, and Captain Toad. Captain Toad is real, but this is one of my definitely more worn out plushes. The tag's missing, the, the headlight is falling off, the backpack is bent off, and uh, whenever I got this, I cut the, uh, uh, the radish and the axe. If you noticed, I, I gave the axe eyes, because in the game it has eyes, but for some reason on the plush they didn't give it eyes. Up next we have Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon Luigi. Oh my f***ing god. Yes, this is Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon Luigi. And uh, here's the Poltergust uh, 5000, I think it was. If you're wondering what happened to him, James wanted to make this Luigi like a dumber version of Luigi and use like paint paste or something to like mess up the entire plush and then just completely abandon it. But uh, it wasn't my original Luigi. So, whatever. Up next is World of Nintendo Metal Mario and All-Star Metal Mario. I, I went over this in my Christmas special. I definitely love this one more, and uh, that's what I think about that one. But uh, yeah, here's Metal Mario. He's very nice, very glossy, and just like, get, get, a, get an expression on that sexy felt. Oh, God. I love my new camera. Here's one of the newest additions to Mario's side protagonists, Cappy. This is a fake Cappy plush, and uh, there was no real Cappy plush at the time. Another plush paint job, which wasn't a total failure. Here is Luigi from Luigi's Mansion 3. But here is Luigi, I just got a goldy Luigi and just painted it green. Here is Hammer Mario from the Super Mario Bros. 3 set. I almost said world. I, oh, let me see what brand this is, I don't even remember. Dan Presto. So here's Hammer Mario, one of the most definitely underrated power-ups. From that same lineup, we have Cape Mario. This is, I took the cape off of it and put it on Luigi in the Rise of Skeletor Part 3, if you remember. Here it is. Yes, it was a pain to get off the plush, and yes, it was very risky, and yes, it almost ripped. As you can see, that there's barely any felt here. But uh, here's the cape, and um, it came with the buttons off when I got it, so, uh, so sad. Here! is very old wing cat mario very small he's very dirty he is not in the greatest condition but you take what you can get right he's still pretty nice he's pretty satisfying to hold his entire lower body is made of bean bags which is pretty neat except for the arms on the head stickers all around and uh yeah now moving on to the custom mario good guys which i only have three of here is mr eraser very nice in my opinion, I, I made it as flat as I could because it's flat in the game, if I remember correctly. Flimsy legs. The only problem with mine is the head. I didn't want it to be to the same color as the uh, eraser part, so I made it like brownish, grayish, and it made it look demented. But it's still pretty nice in my opinion. And then we have another one from the same game, Patrick. I went to Nintendo New York and got a brick block keychain. Well, I think it was a keychain, I'm not really sure. And uh, I just put some eyes and legs over it. If you're wondering why it has this like uh, brown pouch under it, it's because this used to have a hole in it because uh, if you remember in Super Mario Bros. Uh, 3, the brick block jumping Goombas, yeah, I had one a uh, Goomba inside of here originally, but I made it into Patrick. And then the final custom Mario hero 
is Gino from Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars. He's very nice, very stiff all over, pretty stuffed to the brim, maybe not the arms. I like the beads for the necklace or cape thing, pretty nice plush. Definitely taller than the rest, which is kind of a downside, but everything else looks pretty good. Oh yeah, another useless feature. Uh, these things bend out. I don't know why the maker made them like this, but uh, yeah, they, they do that. Uh, again, I, I don't know why. I, I really don't. These are all my Mario good side plushes. Do we do up there? And moving on to power ups. My original super mushroom. This eye has always been like pushed up for a little bit, as if the uh, mushroom looks already cracked out. Here's my original mini mushroom. Here's my original one-up mushroom. My original orange mushroom, which I was originally going to make into a propeller shroom. But alas, there is no propeller Mario plush. Well, actually, there is a propeller Mario plush, a shoe Mario plush, and a frog Mario plush, and a couple others. But they're hard to get your hands on. And lastly, here's my original small Mega Mushroom plush. These plush I are fake, I'm pretty sure, but uh, there's not many plush like it, so I don't care. And then here's my newer Red Mushroom, my newer Mini Mushroom, my newer 1-Up Mushroom, I don't have a new Orange Mushroom, my newer Small Mini Mushroom, not Mini Mushroom, Mega Mushroom, a Yellow Mushroom, a Magenta Mushroom, a, a Light Pink Mushroom, a purple mushroom, which I might turn into the poison shroom. A turquoise mini mushroom, sort of. And the, from the Mario Bros. DS set, the mega mushroom. This one is real, unlike with the rest of them. Next up here is a top hat, I mean a warp pipe. It goes pretty deep down, all the way to the bottom of the cardboard right here. Very smooth, and very nice. Here is the Goldie Mario Bros. Wii set, uh, question mark block. Pretty sure this is from the Wii set, I'm not entirely sure actually. It has like a sound player in it, but I'm pretty sure it's long broken. It might still work if I like throw it hard against the wall. Oh, it just went off, nice. Yeah, it's very old. That's not working. Pretty sure I just broke it for good. Here is a green shell, a red shell, and a banana peel. Very squishy, very smooth, very nice, very worth it in size, and a good plush to have. Here is the OG's fire flower, which I lost its leaf on, and Wii's ice flower. I personally like the ice flower more, even in Galaxy. And I also forgot to mention the black mushroom earlier. Here is a purple shell that I wanted to be a blue shell. It had a blue thing on the, it had a blue thing on the page, but it turned out to be purple for some reason. And I don't know why the seller sold this instead, but uh, here's the purple shell. If I ever used this in a video, I would probably make it do something different but similar to the blue shell. Here's giant pillow blue shell. From the same lineup as the banana peel and the two shells, it is very squishy and probably would be comfortable to lay on. I haven't tried it yet, if you were to lay on this side. Next up here are two eyeballs from a Wow Wow Wubsy character plush, which I'm not showing because I left a lot of the useless plushes in a closet. But um, if you're wondering why I'm showing this, is because I used these eyes in the Baby Mario Odyssey video, if you remember that. And we'll get to where that cap is right now anyway. So uh, here it is. Up next is the Superstar I used in uh, The Rise of Skeletor Part 3. Up close view. Pretty nice. And then lastly, we have the Seven Stars from Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars. These are homemade plush. Back, I, back then, I would just print pictures of things onto like these balls of felt and just stitch them together and then just call them plushes. And that's what I did with these. Red Star, Blue Star, Orange Star. Purple Star, Green Star, which I'm still pissed that doesn't have a background because I have OCD. The White Star, I'm guessing this one is supposed to be, and the Yellow Star. That finishes the second sector, the smallest of the three, of my Mario Plush collection. Now on to the baddies. 
among the basic enemies, the most popular two-footed fungi, the Super Mario DS set Goomba. A very iconic Goomba, to say the least, and uh, I'm very happy to have this one in my collection. And definitely one of the most satisfying of them to hold. Up next is the Sanai Goomba. They have beanbags in the feet, but they're like really, really bunched in there. Then we have World of Nintendo slash All-Star Goomba, another very satisfying Goomba to hold, beanbag feet. And then there's this fake Goomba, which uh, if I ever did use this in a video, it would resemble the Goombas from Super Mario Odyssey. Not, they're not completely micro Goombas, but they're definitely smaller than the rest of them. Then we have two keychain Goomba, or micro Goomba, comparison. This is the one that actually used to be inside Patrick over there as the, the blockhead zombie. Did I just say zombie? I meant Goomba. Up next is, I'm pretty sure, a fake Paragoomba. It's pretty decent though, for a fake. Then we have another fake Paragoomba. This was my first Paragoomba. And then we have the All-Star slash World of Nintendo Paragoomba. I actually got this one like a couple weeks ago, depending on whenever this video is uploaded. Very small wings. Side by side to the regular one, they are very similar. From one of the more underrated Mario games, yet still one of my favorites, Super Mario 3D Land for the Nintendo 3DS. Here's the Tanuki Goomba. This was my first one, and here's my second one, which still has his eyelashes. Up next we have the Macro Goomba. I got this at Nintendo New York, $29.99, which is honestly a pretty bad deal for this, but hey, I didn't have this Goomba, so what the hell. Very satisfying beanbag feat, nonetheless. Probably one of the most satisfying beanbag plush I have. Completing the Goomba fraction of the Mario baddies, we have the Bam Presto Super Mario World set Galoomba. Only reappearing in Super Mario 3D World and probably maybe a spin-off game or two. Here is the Galoomba. Pretty satisfying to hold. The only annoying thing about this plush is that if you look close enough, this uh, string isn't actually sewed to the plush so that it, it, it bends down a little bit under the tooth, which gets annoying to try to keep up. Like this one, I don't have that same problem with because it stays up. Moving on to the Koopas, we have the Gold Goldie Super Mario Bros. Eshimio Joseph Koopa, which is the third ever Mario plush I have, and I won it in an arcade along with Luigi. I'm pretty sure I said that earlier. Maybe I didn't. Who knows? I'll find out whenever I'm finished editing this video. But uh, here he is in all of his glory, in decent condition, although his head likes to hang down like this, which gets really annoying. And then here's the official Sane, maybe? Koopa Troopa. Some of you may know him as Calvin. Next up we have cute yet fake red Koopa, and cute yet fake red Paratroopa. Up next are the bros, Hammer Bro, Boomerang Bro, and Bomb Bro, all fake. Well, actually, maybe not Bomb Bro, I'm not so sure about Bomb Bro. I don't know where his bomb is, I'll probably find it once I'm, like, maybe a, a quarter done with this collection, because, yeah, we haven't barely got there yet. Next up, we have OG Koopa Troopa. Uh, he's a very satisfying shell. His, his entire shell lining is coming apart, though. He held up pretty nice. I'm not entirely sure what brand this is. There was another size of this, but I managed to get my hands on the small one. I'm not sure if this was made for the original Super Mario Bros. or Super Mario Galaxy, because these Koopas were in Galaxy 2, so who knows. Completing the Koopa Cult, we have the Kate's Koopa from the Van Presto Super Mario World set yet again. Oh wait, that's Victokai. Okay, never mind, I got that wrong. Here he is. Next up we have the plants. Here is the my original piranha plant in pretty poor condition. Well maybe not really poor condition, but you can clearly tell that this is fake. What made up for it, the all-star piranha plant. Yet again, one of my plush I got that Nintendo New York tag. Up next we have the piped piranha plant, the smaller one. Uh, I got this a long time ago, surprisingly, at a store that is no longer in business. No, it was not Toys R Us. And I'm happy I did, because I cannot even find the small one anymore. I mainly just see the big ones. <laughs> I like how he's frowning on one end and then just smiling on the other end. Next up, we have two of my four piranha plants. These two are fake. Wait, yep, this one is the fake. Uh, this one I got recently, actually, like, not, like, a month ago or something. And then this one is my first Piranha Plant, which I got, like, eight years ago or something. Next up, we have Galaxy's introduction boss, Dino Piranha. Two of them. This one was my original one, and had to be re-sewed numerous times because this one kept on ripping. But I got a new one, which has held up pretty good since then, and very, very stuffed. 
Completing the greenhouse, we have the Super Mario Bros. DS set, PD Piranhas, two of them. I got this one from a bid along with the Goomba, the Mega Mushroom, Balloon Boo, which you'll see soon, and probably another plush that I don't remember. But uh, here he is, this was my first PD Piranha. This one I got in another bundle because I lost my original Balloon Boo, and uh, he still has his tag. But it allows very, very satisfying plush to hold, yet again. The DS plush are always so satisfying to hold. One Koopa I forgot to add because it was sitting in the back because it's very delicate. Charging Chuck from the Super Mario World Victor Kai set. Yes, he is very, his helmet is in very bad condition because I got this one used. Uh, the face grip moves, or the face protector, whatever you want to call it. It is a pretty satisfying plush to feel. It's got a, like a sort of blanketish feeling shell outline. And uh, one of my more favorites of my rares. Next up we have the Sonai Collection. The camera will focus. Okay, finally. The Sonai Collection Buzzy Beetle. A very, very, very nice plush. I really like it. It's very satisfying to hold underneath. Not much to say about this one. Up next, we have a fake Lakitu plush. And uh, knowing my old self, I cut the Lakitu out of it. Here's Spiny, though. And uh, here's Lakitu without the cloud. Very hideous. And then there was this one, Spike. It's been kind of debatable whether this one is a fake or not. I'm pretty sure it is just a, a bit... I'm, I'm not entirely sure if this is a uh, fake or not, but uh, here it is. I would get the Sun Eye Spike, but uh, I don't really care enough to get it. And then the Here's Birdo from Super Mario Bros. 2. A yet fake, pretty nice plush, and it's held up good for a fake plush. I know I keep saying this, but like, I was a rough kid, and I'm surprised this thing hasn't ripped. From the same game, we have Shy Guy, my original fake Shy Guy, the one that was seen up until BFMI Season 2 Episode 10, in which case I got the All-Star slash World of Nintendo Shy Guy, yet another plush that I got at Nintendo New York. He's a lot nicer, beanbag shoes, fluffy all over, mask. I'm pretty sure this is a fake, but I have the Spear Guy from supposedly Mario Party 5, but I'm pretty sure this is fake. I'm not entirely sure though, because this is one of the more newer plushes. I picked this up not too long ago, but uh, yeah, here's Spear Guy. Up next is my first Pokey, my uh, big Pokey from, uh, this is probably fake, but it, it's pretty sure meant, it's meant to resemble the Mario Galaxy Pokey, as it has these orange leaves. Did I just say, God, I'm so colorblind. And then we have the All-Star, maybe? Which one is this? All-Star Sana, I don't remember. But whatever the case here he is, definitely a lot nicer. Bean bags. And then, uh, here's the Thwomp pillow. It says pillow on it, but we all know the real purpose of this, or at least what it's only bought for. Because, like, who would honestly want to sleep? on this. Up next here is my one and only cheap sheet. I'm not sure if this is fake, but I have been told by a couple commenters that this is real and rare, although I've been told that it's the opposite as well, so I'm not entirely sure. Comment if this is real or not. Here is the blooper. This one is not a fake, surprisingly, despite it being unseen. I've, I've almost never seen this blooper on any other YouTube channel. A small, squishy plush. A peculiar pick of Santa, I think. Here is the Porky Puffer, one of the most annoying bitches in the world in the Mario games, so specifically Super Mario Wii and Wii U. This thing would always chase you around and then jump up randomly. It was the most annoying thing in the world, especially for mountain slash water levels or beach levels. Completing the aquatic bunch, we have the Rip Van Fish. I'm pretty sure this was called. The Rip Van Fish is part of the Super Mario World set, and uh, if you're wondering why this eye looks a little fed up, uh, this thing used to be on this eye, but I it fell off, and so I had to improvise. I did as best as I could, trying to scrape off the hot glue, and this is the outcome. It doesn't look too bad from a distance, but if you go closer, you can clearly see the flaws. In Super Mario World, he will await sleeping, and if Mario got too close to him, he would wake up and chase you around. He's basically the spiny cheap cheap, but less annoying. Next up, the paranormal pocketful, well actually not at all pocketful, of booze. Here is my Sunai boo, which I got recently, and here is my original boo, which looks retarded, and it's like it's flat, it looks like a teardrop from the side, it's just stupid looking, and uh, I turn it into a stupid character. Next up, we have cheap booze. We have this boo, that boo, this boo, that boo. All of these boos are, well, I'm not sure about this one, but these three boos are unofficial, but I have them for some reason, and uh, this is a scared boo, and uh, the strange thing is that this thing opens up and has nothing inside of it. You can put things in here, but I don't know why you would ever want to do that. And then there was this one. I wanted to order a big Boo plush. I ordered one and that happened. It is bigger than the normal Boo, but definitely not as big enough. 
unless you classified this the Mario Big Boo. Now that is small for a Big Boo. Another tailed foe from Super Mario 3D Land, we have the Tanuki Boo. This is my original, and this is another one. This one is a lot softer, and this is still my original and probably very dirty. And then there's this monstrosity. This was a Boo Mario, and it was my original Boo Mario, but it just completely fell apart. And, uh, that's basically the whole gist of it. And this was all that was left. The mustache fell off, the hat fell off, and all that was left of this is this just retarded screaming boo with a nose that just makes it look absolutely retarded. So that's what happened to that. And then we have Polter Pup. This was a very hard plush to find at the time I got it, and I got it on an Easter of 24. 14 maybe? I'm not sure, but it was a long time ago, and uh, I'm not sure what brand this is actually. Let me just check. Uh, it's whatever that says. Up next is my Balloon Boo from the Super Mario DS set. This boo is exclusive to that game. I'm not sure if it's appeared in any spinoffs, but since then it has not appeared in any mainline games. It What it would do is it would start off very big, and as it comes closer to you, it would shrink down because it uses the air inside of it to propel itself, and it would stand still, gain more air, and then start to use it to propel itself towards you more. So that's what the Balloon Boo does in the game, and I don't know why they ever decided to make this into a plush, but here it is. I did, uh, this is my newer Balloon Boo, but I actually found my old Balloon Boo not too long ago. I lost this Balloon Boo five years ago, and I found it like a month ago. I found it on top of my refrigerator. For five years, this plush has been sitting on my refrigerator, and I finally found it. A Last of the boos. Here is Bomboo from Super Mario Galaxy. The Boulder Geist fight specifically. It's never appeared anywhere else. If I get that piece of stuffing off. This is my own custom. It took like two weeks to make, I'm pretty sure, with just using free bits of my spare time. I it turned out pretty good in my opinion. It can do most things a boo can. I stitched it pretty nicely. The only problem is this glue stain on it, which still pisses me off to date, but hey, which can what can you do? Inspect the brushwork. Next up is Fuzzy, or Fuzzball, as the OGs know him as. Very stuffed and fake. But I managed to get my hands on the real Fuzzball, or the real Fuzzy, which has bean bags in it. This one does not. Wait, does it? No, it doesn't. But uh, here he is. He's a lot squishier. And I got my hands on a third one for no apparent reason. But this one looks extremely funny, so I am I like it a lot. <laughs> Up next is the Wiggler from the Soda Jungle, or, or in originating in Super Mario World, or however you want to describe this guy. This is a fake, and I don't care about getting the real one, because this one looks good enough. I need to cut this freaking thread off. It's already pissing me off. Next, we have the official Screamy with your IP of Puesto, little buddy, whatever the fuck the brand is, Monty Mole. I honestly don't know why this guy is so overpriced nowadays, but here he is in all his glory. I got him years back whenever he came out, and now he's worth a gold mine for some reason. I, on, I Again, I don't understand why. But, uh, nonetheless, he is a pretty nice plush, and, uh, he's definitely satisfying to hold. On the contrary, we have the Victor Kai, uh, what's it called? Uh, Super Mario World Monty Mole, who has real sort of whiskers. Not really. He, here he is. He's smaller, different shade. I don't know why. Here's the here's the tags. If you for, uh, for the commenters who are always saying my stuff is fake, but uh, yeah, those are my Monty Mole. Here is the Bullet Bill. He is fake. Here is the World of Nintendo Banzai Bill. He's not very big compared to him. But I got what I was looking for, which was the big Banzai Bill. One of my biggest plush. Well, my biggest plush is probably Luigi over there, but this is definitely up there. And then a similar column, we have Bomb, or bob -omb. That's a fake bob -omb. I I don't know what brand this is, but it's, it's, a, it's some sort of real brand some real official brand. And then here's the Red Bob Bomb. I know he's not an enemy and I should have put him with the other uh, good guys, but he's he's literally, he's just a side character in like one level and uh, it, it just fits more to put him with the other Bob Bombs. Next up is Chain Chomp. My entire Chain Chomp collection is fake. I like these Chain Chomp because they have the realistic chains. So here they are, here are two of mine. This one doesn't have a chain, but that's fine because this one I could simply classify as the Mario Galaxy Chain Chomp where they just boing along the ground. 
Here's the blue and red one. This was actually my first ever Chain Chomp. Here are two Chain Chomp that came with the Scared Boo over there. They, these two plush can open as well. They're two different expressions of Chain Chomp. Sort of, not really. And that's all my Chain Chomp. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to mention about the mini Yoshis, I should have included this in there. That's the Yarn Yoshi from Yoshi's Woolly World Amiibo. Next up we have Nabbit, uh, yet another very nice Mario plush. And then we have Kamek, and then we have Mecha Koopa, one of my favorite Mario plush. Because I, I love the wind, I love the uh, the Bowser bracelet that is used as a, a shell outline. I love the, 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 the screws, I love the feet. It's just a very detailed plush, and I really, really like it. It's one, definitely one of my favorites, despite it not being that rare. Mecha toy, mecha toy, mecha toy, mecha toy. Oh yeah, I also lost the wand. I'll probably find it later though, whenever I'm done digging through all this. Moving on to the Skeletal Squad, we first have the smaller Dry Bones, one of my more rare plushes because I'm always seeing the big one and not the small one around, but alas, here's the small one. And again, here's another one, which might be a different brand because it, you can tell the differences. The, the shades in the gloves and feet are different, the head is fatter, well not really fatter, it's just, it looks wider, but it's not. It's, it's more roundish, I should say that, like with the round curves. But alas, it's pretty similar, and uh, this one is actually Typing Man, it's not mine. And yes, this is the Dryer Bones, and this is the Dry Bones. They are not two of this, they are the, not the same plush, they are two separate plush. Same goes for Parabones and Dryer Parabones. This is my original Parabones. I, I'm pretty sure may, someone spilled like maybe coffee or chocolate on here a while back because that stain has been there for a while. And then here's the Dryer Parabones, which is clearly fake. It's It feels a lot different. Its head is round like the uh, Dryer Bones. And uh, so that's Dryer Parabones. This one is mine, unlike Dryer Parabones. Unlike Dryer Bones, God damn it! And then here's the darker, uh, Dry Bones, the newer one, which is a lot nicer. It feels a lot nicer. The only annoying thing is like these bumps in his chest, but it's not that big of a deal. And in the end, it's a very nice plush. Oh yeah, um, here's a bone that I got from Build-A-Bear Workshop that I also made a uh, Dry Bones use. And uh, here is Dry, here is Parabrute. I called this one Dry Brute, and this one is Parabrute, because they, or is, it's just bigger. I mean, it only makes sense. But uh, here he is. I've barely ever seen the big Parabones on YouTube. I, I am one of the few YouTubers I've ever seen use this. So uh, that's kind of unique, I suppose. Although for some reason, his pointer finger and maybe his ring finger, he's missing a finger. I don't know which one. But uh, they're kind of spread apart for some reason. And it also has a hole in it. The these plush, I'll these three plush I got from my cousin, so they're kind of used. Next up is the meme stars. Starting off with yours truly, Wario. Pretty big for a Wario plush. This is the real rare Goonzilla one or whatever YouTuber you prefer. Very nice, I really like this one. Here is everybody's favorite Waluigi. Here he is in all of his glory. <coughs> Next up is Nerd Baby Waluigi and Baby Wario. These two are not from the same lineup as the other Baby Plush. I'm pretty sure these are fake, but there's no other Baby Waluigi or Baby Wario Plush, so I got them anyway. And then I have two sets of fake Baby Wario and Baby Waluigi before the real ones. Well, these probably aren't even real either, but before these came out, I got four of these for some reason. So that's that. Up next here is my original DK, and then my DK that I won in a carnival. The both DKs are fake, sorry about that, but uh, both DKs are fake as I was explaining, but this one definitely looks better as, well, in my opinion that one looks better. If you guys want me to use this one, if I ever were to use this, then I, I mean I'll go right ahead, but I'd definitely rather use this one. Oh yeah, and then there's Diddy Kong. Now we're getting to Koopa Kids slash bosses slash extras. Here is uh, Super Mario Bros. Wii U Boom Boom. Very nice, very big arms. The shell looks very nice and a very satisfying plush to hold, yet again. And then here's his counterpart, Pom Pom, specifically the Super Mario 3D Land Slash World Pom Pom, as there's no other Pom Pom. And uh, yes, I'm still triggered that Pom Pom got into Super Mario Party and Boom Boom didn't for some reason, as Boom Boom was introduced far earlier in Super Mario Bros. 3. Now we have Koopalings. Here is the original Lemmy I have without the wand. This is one of my more well held up in condition plush, but despite it being dirty, it has lost nothing else besides its wand, but I purposely cut that off. And then we have Lemmy, or the fake little buddy Lemmy, or uh, whatever brand this is. 
It looks far more retarded and is from a newer generation and is not the original, as you can clearly see. Up next is Larry, yet again one of my better held up plushes, because all of the Koopalings were, were the stuff that me and my friends would use to destroy and play with and use the most. So these two have held up pretty well compared to the rest. And uh, I have this one, but this one is actually from Lemmy, not this Lemmy. But uh, this one still has its wand, surprisingly. So, uh, and these were my first, these were my first two Koopalings, actually. The rest of them I got separately. Up next, we have Wendy and Iggy. Iggy is another almost perfectly held up Koopaling, as the only thing that's missing is this drop that's supposed to be in here. So uh, now he snake, he funny, funny python go burp. His wand is actually pretty straight compared to Larry. And uh, and then here's Wendy. Now, I did find this a while back. I'm not sure if this is Wendy's wand or not, but who knows, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But if this is Wendy's wand, then I'm leaving it with Wendy. Completing the Elite 7, here is Roy, Ludwig, and Morton. Roy has held up pretty decent as he still has his bracelets, and uh, the only and he's missing his wand, but the only problem is that this has fallen down. But this is easy, re-hot, glueable, so that should be fine. And uh, Ludwig has held up pretty decent, except for both of his bracelets being flung away. I've never had to resell Ludwig. Well, wait. Okay, maybe I've had to resell Ludwig. I'm not entirely sure. And then here's Morton, my favorite Koopling of the bunch. And uh, he's missing his wand and his bracelet, but that's all the damage he's s sustained. I have never had to restitch this one. However, for Ludwig, Roy, and Morton, I've gotten new versions for, and uh, I'm pretty sure this Roy was a fake, so I'm happy to have this new Roy. So here's a new Roy, a new Morton, and a new Ludwig. Now I'm definitely going to switch out Ludwig, because this Ludwig is a lot cleaner, a lot fluffier, still has his wand, and just overall looks nicer, just because it's not as dirty. And then Morton, I might switch out Morton, I'm not entirely sure, because this Morton looks a little, a little bit more derpy compared to this Morton, I might switch it out, or I might just take one of the bracelets off and then put it on Morton. I'm, I'm still debating on whether I should change it. But uh, Roy, I'm definitely changing because this Roy is like freaking long for some reason, but this Roy looks a lot better and uh, it still has this wand and it's it's just better. I'm definitely switching it. But uh, yeah, that ends off my Koopalings. Next we have Bowser Jr. This is a fake Bowser Jr. as you can tell by the the brown spike outlines. It, it does look pretty similar to everyone else's Bowser Jr. except for this part of his head not being as long and uh, of course the, the brown spikes like I mentioned earlier. But other than that, it looks pretty decent, but I got this one, which I am, again, I'm not sure if this one is real or either or not, but it definitely looks better compared to this one, so I will definitely be switching over to this one. And uh, I have two more Bowser Juniors. But they're from the this the Super Mario Sunshine one with the paintbrush. Now I, this was my original one, I believe, and then I got this one after that from my cousin again. And now moving on, we have Bowser, the most seen Bowser in the world, the one that's hunched over and looking at the sky. Yeah, that's the Bowser that's that's ridiculously used for some reason. And then there is this Bowser, which is fake, but I I wasn't gonna use this anyway because I just like this one more. But uh, here's this one. And then we have Dry Bowser, Dark Bowser. His arms are always pointed forward like a Fall Guy for some reason. And then King Koopa Bowser, one of my more recent Mario plush. Here is Skeletor. Or Dry Bowser Jr. I simply just took a glossy vampire cape and a chain I wanted a garage sale and slapped it on a Dry Bowser Jr. plush under the cape. And uh, I turned the bib around too, like uh, there's uh, the bib uh, right there. I turned it around because obviously this is this character is not meant to be Bowser Jr. in my show. But uh, I still haven't sewed that freaking rip, surprisingly. I used that as an excuse to delay the rise of Skeletor, if you guys remember. But uh, yeah, here's Skeletor, a very nice plush, very satisfying to hold, especially with the cape. And uh, yeah, that's that. Now we're moving on to leftover extras. Here is Dragular, not an official Mario character, but if you watch Mr. Gojira 95, you know why he's included here. And I wrapped up the fire in his mouth. Up next here is Wacka from the Thousand Year Door and Super Paper Mario, whichever one you prefer. I used Goomzilla's tutorial to make this Wacka, and uh, don't complain, I didn't have the right shade of blue at the time, so uh, this Wacka is more of a turquoise than the original. Still a pretty nice plush though. What did you? 
Here is King K.D. Mr. Gojira's King K. Rule, or Disney alligator plush that he just slapped a crown and cape on. I don't know if the bands were there originally, but uh, yeah, here's King K. Rule, and uh, he came with this trumpet originally, like the Disney character, or whatever movie this was from. It came with a trumpet originally, and I still kept it around, just cause. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know why I kept this around, but it came with the King K. Rule plush. So here it is. Cape. So this is just a sheet of felt with a cut up end. Yeah, I like this plush a lot. Up next we have Goober or Gobber from Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. Like what I explained with the uh, Power Stars earlier, I, this is just another picture slapped plush. So yeah, that's that's all there is to say about that. Up next is a crochet. Oh, I dropped it. Uh, is a crochet uh, Pokio plush from Super Mario Odyssey. These little guys were in the Bowser Kingdom, and uh, you use them to fight the the Mecha Brutal or whatever that boss was. This is one of my favorite capture targets, and I decided to buy a crochet version of it, and it came with the hat. Pretty nice. Got a close view. Um, next is Eastwag, I, I mean Egad. He is made by the same seller I usually buy from, and like with other plush, he is far too big, but still looks very nice nonetheless. The arms are slightly bendable. They don't stay bent for a very long time, though. And the, the hair is nice, and the glasses, and, and uh, yeah, pretty nice plush. And then, from a similar game, here is King Boo, specifically the Dark Moon version, as you can see the, the gem in his crown. I bought this because I love Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, it was one of my favorite games playing on the 3DS, and uh, I played it for hours, specifically Scare Scraper, and uh, I replayed the final boss like 18 times, so uh, yeah, I bought this King Boo plush, and he has a ridiculously long tail for some reason. If you saw Beef of My 18, then you've already heard of this guy. Up next is Conktor from Super Mario 3D World. If you saw my Christmas collection, you already know that I have this guy. He is a ostrich with a turtle shell for whatever reason, and uh, he is very, very, very stuffed to the brim. Probably the most stuffed plush I have, because it is very hard to squish this thing. I'm surprised. This thing will probably rip soon, gonna be honest, because how stuffed it is. But uh, here he is. He is very tall, but that's what I like because he's tall in the games. Very lengthy. He has a bendable neck, as I, I just broke his neck. Um... Me, okay, your neck's not broken anymore. Feet, hair, and uh, he's got a, le a neat little feature under his glasses. Yeah, he has eyes under there. That has to be the most weirdest details the seller has ever made. But, uh, unique nonetheless. The last Mario plush I have to offer you guys. Here is everyone's favorite jester, Dementio. I got this guy back in 2018, in, on Christmas actually, but I didn't want to show him off at first. And uh, here he is, he's very, very fluffy. Very big in size compared to his inner game counterpart, but hey, what can you do? Arms, hands, cloak. A very nice plush from one of my all-time favorite Wii games, Dementio. You're gonna lose. So yeah, this completes my fully newly updated Mario plush collection of 2021. And yeah, my collection has grown quite a lot over the past eight years, and I hope to keep growing it. If they actually decide to make more plush. But uh, yeah, this is all my Mario plush. 